welcome to session on mathematics we are in a very interesting and important topic of algebra that is permutations and combinations these are combinedly also known as combinatorics now as this deals with selections arrangements the different possible combinations this is all combinedly known as combinatorics now in this session 1 we'll first try to learn some notations about the study of the topic importantly the notations of factorial an important algebraic operation on integers that is a factorial we'll see some properties of this factorial and then we'll also learn very two fundamental principles which would be repeatedly used throughout the study of this combinatorics topics that is fundamental principles of counting now basically this fundamental principles are into two types one is addition principle and the other one is multiplication principle so there are two types of fundamental principles which are very important quite simple applications but have a very important application as far as the study of this topic is concerned now before we go further into learning the main ideas of combinatorics that is factorials and fundamental principles let's observe what is the main force behind this combinatorics now suppose if i ask you some simple question as between 10 to 100 that is all the two digit numbers if i say how many integers are there which are divisible by 3 now as of today because this is a pure algebra based question for which you need to find the number of integers between 10 and 100 which are divisible by 3 then one way is actually count how many numbers are there that exist between 10 and 100 which are divisible by 3 so what we do is we start counting the multiples that is 12 15 18 21 24 keep counting like this and we end our counting with 99 and then we'll count this as a first number this as a second number this is my third number this is my fourth this is fifth so on and we'll find which number is this right and even if you wanted to avoid this process of counting yes there is a procedure in algebra with the help of sequences that you can clearly identify that these all numbers are forming an ap in the ap having the first term as 12 and the common difference as 3 because multiples of 3 will be having forming an ap in which the common difference between any two consecutive terms will be always 3 then if the tnth number is 99 we wanted to find which number is what is n value right that would give the term counter of how many terms are there which are multiples of 3 that is divisible by 3 so for that what we do we use the fundamental principle of arithmetic progression when we write a plus n minus 1 into d is 99 wherein a is 12 and we don't know how many such multiples are there so n be the number where the common difference is 3 then this is 99 wherein you get n minus 1 times 3 becomes 99 minus 12 which is 87 right so you get n minus 1 as 29 and simply you will say n is 30 so there are 30 such numbers between 10 and 100 which are divisible by 3 now this is a very simple question and yes you can answer it by a procedure called sequence and series or you can also count them as a layman you can count such multiples and say this is fifth this is sixth this is seventh like that and you will end up with getting 99 as 30 but there is a problem in both the methods that we approach if we wanted to use the method of sequences then we need to use the sequential calculations formulas in order to get the answer of this question now if you are a layman and not aware of the sequences formulas then you cannot apply this process right not only that now here we are counting only two digit numbers so actually counting the numbers as this is first this is second this is third this is fourth this is fifth like this and going on up to 99 is possible but do you identify if the same question would have been between 1000 to 2 1 lakh how many numbers are divisible by 3 then does a virtual counting work no because there will be too many numbers and it is a more time consuming process to calculate all such numbers right now there is another question possible that comes out as say how many ways can say 6 books be distributed among 5 students 
Now look at this question. Clearly, there is no such algebraic procedure as we have done in the previous case with the help of sequences. There is no such algebraic procedures predefined to answer this kind of a question. Huh, but still, a Lehman evaluation of different possibilities could be evaluated on this. If you treat the students as say S1, S2, S3, S4 and S5 as the five distinct students and then the six books be distributed among them. We can calculate different procedures of giving one such book to him. I mean book one to this boy, book two to this boy, book three and book four to this person, this book five to the fourth boy and the book six to the fifth student and different possible distributions of this. Maybe we won't give any book to the first boy and the second boy, but give only book one and book two to this third student, book three and book five to the fourth student and the rest of the two books that is book four and book six be given to the fifth students. Now like this can we write all different possibilities? No, even a layman cannot expect to write all the different possible distributions of the six books among five students. Such a calculation is not possible in terms of a normal procedure of evaluating the different possibilities nor there is any standard mathematical operators available to us, mathematical formulas available to us which would help us to count these case of distributions, right? Now, if you particularly look at the questions, the both the questions that we asked here, yes, this is the most crucial part. We are not interested in knowing what are the numbers which are divisible by 3 that lies between 10 and 100. We are not interested in what are the different ways that 6 books be distributed among the 5 students. Then why are we writing this? What combination is the first student getting the book 1, is the fourth student getting the book 5th? Why do we need this combination? That is not in the question. If you clearly observe the question, what we need is how many different possibilities. That's all, right? So here we are not worried about the quality of distribution or the quality of numbers. What we want is only the quantity of numbers. How many numbers exist? 30 numbers exist. What the 30 are is a different procedure of answering. But here also, we don't want to know what are the possible distributions, which book is S1 getting, which book is S3 getting, which book is S5 getting. This is not interested. What we need is only the number of ways of distribution, right? Now, these questions of how many numbers, wherein what are the different ways is not important, but how many different ways is important can be answered in a very easy form with the help of the topic called combinatorics. Now, this chapter that is combinatorics will help us to find an answer to how many numbers are divisible by 3, whether it is between 10 to 1000 or between 1000 to 1 lakh or you put any range here, we can still find how many such numbers are possible without adopting actually the counting of individual characterizations or by using any standard mathematical operators. Similarly, in a non-algebraic, non-numerical case like six different books be distributed among five different students, then still combinatorics offers a method of evaluating the total number of possibilities without at all discussing about what are the different possibilities, right? This topic combinatorics is basically divided into two major parts. One is permutation and another one is combination. Whereas the base of both these permutations are combinations is basically the fundamental principles of counting. There are two different principles of counting which we will be learning in the immediate discussion now. The fundamental principles of counting would help us to define what is a permutation and how many such permutations. Similarly, what is a combination and how many such combinations are possible. So, shall we go ahead with knowing what is fundamental principle of counting? Right. Let's understand the simple questions that we are about to answer here. How many different two digit numbers can be formed using 1, 2 and 3 using each digit only once that is not repeating any of the digit in the two digited numbers. Now carefully follow the process in which I am solving this question. There is something called a set given to us that is 1, 2 and 3. Now the set consists of three numbers in them but we need to form only a two digited number right. Therefore the two digited number could be 
a combination of only 1 and 2 or it could be a combination of 1 and 3 or it could be a combination of 2 and 3 right the two digits which are which we needed to form should be a combination of either 1 and 2 or it should consist of 1 and 3 or it could consist of 2 and 3 now when we assume 1 and 2 are participating in formation of the two digit number what are the different possible two digit numbers that we can form from 1 and 2 yes they could give rise to maybe a two digit number called 12 or a two digit number called 21 right what is the difference here in this number if you observe the units place is given by 2 and the tens place is having 1 in it whereas if you look at the second number here here the units place is filled by 1 whereas the tens place is filled by 2 as the numbers 1 and 2 are placed in two different positions one is units position and the tens position the final output is different similarly when I am using 1 and 3 and need to form a two digit number what are the two possibilities yes the units place could be with 3 and the tens place could be at 1 which gives us 13 as the possibility wherein the units place could be now with 1 and the tens place could be arranged with 3 then you end up by getting a number 31 now both of them are using the same two digits 1 and 3 in them similarly if you look at this what are the two digit numbers that use only 2 and 3 in them yes the units place arranged with 3 and the tens place arranged with 2 will result in a number 23 wherein if the units place is with 2 and the tens place is with 3 then you end up by getting a number 32 right as the positioning of units place and the tens place are interchanged among the two numbers 2 3 here or 1 and 3 here or 1 and 2 here you got different possible outcomes so what are the final possible outcomes what are the different two digit numbers that we are able to form using 1 2 3 yes we are able to form 12 as a possibility and 21 as a possibility similarly 13 as a possibility and 31 as a possibility and then there is a possibility of 23 and there is a possibility of 32 now these are the six possible two digit numbers that can be formed using 1 2 and 3 now carefully observe here when we have taken two such numbers and wanted to form a two digit number where the selected two numbers are from this set one two three only where and nowhere we used four in the combination because four is not available in the choice so from the choices when you taken any two digits at a time and these two digits are used to form a two digit number then the two digit number has changed according to what is present at the units place and what is present at the tens place the designated place values change has resulted in two different available numbers here also as the designated units place and tens place were interchanged you got two different possibilities the units and tens place are interchanged then you got two different possibilities right so here if you observe taking two numbers from the available numbers and for each of the taking of two two numbers we have even endorsed the selected number into a fixed positioning right so here what we did we have taken two numbers and then the two numbers were placed in their respective positions then the final outcomes have been created and the total outcomes are six so such a selection or such a job in which from a total out you select required number and out of the each selection arrange them according to their place values then such an arrangement is called permutation so in a permutation what we are doing is we are arranging the numbers after selection of required things first I need to select two numbers which is what we did here and from the selection we have designed them according to their positioning units position tens position units position tens position so we have done two jobs here one is selection after the selection we have arrangement such a job of arrangement after the required selection is called as permutation we will formally define it but have you understood the logic behind this now let us see is it the only possibility look at this question how many subsets of two elements can be formed using one two and three now from the set using 1, 2 and 3, we need to form a subset of having two elements, right? So in the subset, how many of this member should be there? Only two members should be there. That means the subset might consist of 1 and 2. The subset might consist of 2 and 3 or the required subset might consist of 3 and 1. Now these are different possible two element collections we have collected two elements but what we required to form we need to just form a subset that means the selection of one and two will give us 
a subset of the form set of 1 comma 2 similarly the selection of 2 and 3 will give us a set of 2 3 and the selection of 3 and 1 would give us a subset of 3 and 1 now will you have a different subset still having the same elements 1 and 2 can i write 2 comma 1 is also a subset no because this is same as that of this subset similarly 3 comma 2 which is also a subset formed by the same two elements 2 and 3 but this is not a separate subset of 1 2 3 because this is same as the set 2 comma 3 similarly this question says 1 comma 3 will not be a separate set subset of 1 2 3 because this will be same as that of the set 3 1 now in this case what did we observe there is no positioning importance is given only we selected 1 2 and that gave us one subset we selected 2 3 now why you selected only two elements because we need to form only a subset of two elements once we have selected two elements there is only one subset that is coming up that means in this subset formation the interchanging of elements is not possible shall we give it a mathematical word saying the ordering of elements or the positioning of elements is not required in this so here what is the job we did we did only selection of required things when we do only selection such a selection is called as yes combination when only selection is done but there is no internal fixing of their positions then such a thing is called as only combination wherein previously what we did we have selected and after selection we have predefined their prefixed their positioning also right so that is by prefixing the positions we have done arrangement now the arrangement in combination with a selection is called permutation whereas only selection is called as combination now to understand this idea more clearly let's look at an example of say in a class there are three boys mr a mr b and mr c okay and there are a planning for a photograph to take the photograph we have taken two chairs and said this sit two people out of this three a b c should be seated here so that we make a photograph now my question is how many different photographs are possible can you answer this question yes it's a very simple observation there will be one photograph in which say these are chairs numbered chair one and chair two maybe the boy a sits here and the boy b sits here this will give me first photograph the same chairs one and two maybe b sits here and a sits to the right then i'll get a second possible photograph similarly a sits in this chair and c is sitting in the second chair this would be a different photograph now c sitting in this chair and a sitting in this chair would give us the fourth different photograph right not only this when b sits in this chair and c sits in this chair this would result in a new photograph that is photo 5 and when c sits here and b sits here this will be photograph number 6 now what do you observe here when three students are there and when you fix two separate chairs for them and wanted to take different photographs what we did is we have fixed this positioning and fixed this position and then who is sitting in these chairs out of this a b and c is making a difference for us that means selecting a and b and then putting them in their respective chairs in two different forms similarly selecting a and c and putting them in two different chairs similarly selecting b and c and putting them in different chairs so here we are both selecting this is selection of a and b this is selection of a and c and this is selection of b and c we are first selecting and out of the selection you are prefixing their positions first chair second chair right side chair and the left side chair so have we got different arrangements also right so is this a permutation or a combination yes clearly this is a permutation because you have done both the jobs you have selected and then you have arranged them now look at the another scenario if i treat this as scenario one now understand this scenario how many ways can two people be sent from this class of three students abc how many ways i can send two students for say a debate competition yes how many teams can be sent maybe we can send the team of a and b as a team or maybe the sent team could consist of b and c or maybe the sent team could be in a combination of a and c right is there any other possibility of using these three students and sending two of them for a debate competition i can send maybe a and b as a team or maybe b and c as a team 
or maybe A and C as a team. But within the team, because they both are competing on an equal ground, is there is no distinction between whether A and B are sent or B and A are sent. Still, the team going is a combination of these two boys only. Similarly, when I am talking about C and A as a team, it doesn't make a difference whether it is C and A team or A and C team. Because in both the cases, the same two persons will be going and participating in the debating competition. So what is happening in this? What is the difference you observe from that previous example to this example? Here, there is no internal positioning value given to B and C. Within the selection, there is no importance of B over C or an importance of C over B. There is no preferential positioning for C or a preferential positioning for B over the other, right? Here, we are doing only one job. We are only selecting. So is this a permutation or a combination? Yes, this is a combination. Now, this is only a combination because there is no arrangement done. Here we have done only selection, right? Whereas here what we did, why did we call this as a permutation? We did selection and after selection, we have also arranged them, right? We have allotted the seat. B has got the particular seat C1 and A has got the particular seat C2. When we interchanged their positions, then A is now sitting in the chair C1 and B is sitting in the chair C2. So here we have arranged their respective positions. Where in the second example, once the team is selected, there is no importance given to either of them. Such a only selection procedures are called as combinations mathematically and the selection of required things and arranging the selected things together are called as permutations mathematically, right? In order to study combinatorics, we will be basically studying about permutations and combinations. The topic of combining both of them is called as combinatorics. Now, before we proceed to find, I mean, study about this, let's understand the important notations of mathematics that is factorial.